Hey YouTubers, this is Paul with 503 Diggers. Um, first of all, uh, you haven't uh, met me by face yet, so welcome to the channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a video on three different cordless headphone setups. One is a Bluetooth. Uh, I'll show you what that one is. It's got a delay. I didn't use it. I uh, got it just to kind of see how it worked and how much of a delay there is because I've seen some videos where people are using this thing in different comments. and. Uh, after a few seconds of using it, just testing it here at my house, I don't know how they can use the thing. Um, the second one is an FM transmitter that can transmit FM signal, multiple different channels you can select from. Uh, I'll give you a demo on that one. It's a pretty low cost setup. The third one is a 2.4 gigahertz. The TDK 700 WR or WR 700 is one. I was thinking it was over the ear, and I even mentioned that in the video when I'm doing the testing it is not over the ear I don't know of one that is over the ear that has the smaller transmitter that can plug into a detector and works through the headphone jack like that anyways let me get to the stuff here I'll move my camera angle and get it taken care of and we'll run through these all right here's one of the other options I've tried for uh, cordless headphone setup. I knew it was going to have a delay. I didn't know how much delay it was going to be. And what it is, it's a Bluetooth setup. This here is a Bluetooth stereo transmitter. I don't think it's going to come into focus there. No focus at all. There we go. Tiny little thing. This is the part that plugs into your machine. Sends the Bluetooth signal <clears throat> to your headphones or whatever Bluetooth device you try to use. And this particular setup has a small plug, so you would be required to use, again, an adapter, and I always opted for the 90 degree. <clears throat> the Bluetooth headphone setup is just this type of setup here that I use. It's kind of like earbuds that are connected, and both come with their own charging cable. This one has its own type of cable. It's just a tiny little pin mount. Plugs into... Uh, any USB type port or a wall jack that has a USB like your cell phone setup. This one has the standard USB, older style, not the micro. Same thing on the other side. Plug it into a computer or, once again, a cell phone type charge that has the disconnectable cord. I'll set those up and show you what they sound like. Okay, this is the Bluetooth headset with the Bluetooth transmitter. Simple, easy plug-in. Just simply take this, plug it in to the headphone jack. And what I did when I was using it, attempting to use it, is I just double stick taped it right to here. I currently still have the uh, 2.4 uh, D-Technics on here and uh, it's disconnected. So I'm just gonna set this in here for this test and we'll show you what it sounds like. I believe you'll be able to hear that. I have my sensitivity set way down on the detector so that uh, it doesn't get messed with with all the electronics in the garage. Tape measure there to show you how far it takes effect after. So you can see there the, the delay in there. By the time I hear the sound, I'm probably a good I would say three or four inches past that target. Now if someone were swinging faster, you could be a foot off by the time you hear that sound. Once again, this is a Bluetooth setup. Um, yeah, it works. No, there's no... Uh, static in there but totally unusable as a detectorist I would never find a target that way alrighty moving to the next one okay for the next cordless style uh, one of the things I come across and had an idea of doing was finding a FM transmitter and I ended up going with this setup if I can get out of the box it's a little tiny transmitter when you turn it on it'll display what channel it's currently using. 
So any FM device or FM radio pickup device like uh, the style of headphones that construction workers wear, you can change the channels to whatever you'd like. I have been using, when I use this, 88.1 on it. It's just simply a power on and off. The charging cable, which is a micro USB, and since it comes out in this smaller headphone jack, I ended up picking up an adapter and instead of going just to a straight on adapter, which for the e track doesn't work so well because that makes this thing stick way out the back, I went with a 90 degree. Pretty simple installation on this thing, and when you're using it, as you notice, unless you change it. Or touch the button and you get a battery display in here. I don't know if you can pick that up. Yep, you can. And uh, it goes off after a bit to conserve energy. The backlight does. And it won't come back on until you either turn it off or turn it back on. Um, what I was using when I was using this, and here's another version. I picked up another one for my youngest to use in case he wanted to do it. It's a different style. Works the same, same setup. What I was using when I was using this setup was a uh, just one of those little tiny, tiny, um, oh, what was the thing called? It's like an iPod, but it's a different version. It had an FM receiver in it. You want to use an FM receiver that doesn't have to use, go through a uh, an app. Um, so the, the uh, FM headphones, um, I was using that little receiver. Sand, or... SanDisk, no. Sansa, that's what it was. A little tiny square thing about twice the size of this. It had FM receiver in it. And I was plugging in this to it and then just using earbuds. Worked pretty good. Um, my son has the Sansa right now, so what I'm going to do is hook it up to my garage stereo. You'll probably hear a bunch of static. That's the one thing I did notice is you deal with static on the darn thing. But responsiveness seems to be pretty good. So I'll get set up on it and show you what they sound like. All right, for the installation, like I say, pretty straightforward, pretty simple, pretty easy. I plug that into the adapter, plug it into the detector. It sits nice out of the way. If you want, you could have it different ways. It really doesn't matter, but I like to be able to see it. Watch the battery level. Battery seems pretty long life. Uh, never ran out on one hunt and I was out for probably about a six seven hour hunt one day So let me get everything turned on and we'll show you what it sounds like Okay, like I said you have to deal with a little bit of static so you can hear it in the background When I used them, I didn't notice that I was losing track of the uh, coin. It seemed to pinpoint pretty accurate. Not a delay, if there's any at all. Real cheap way to go, because these transmitters are like eight, ten dollars, maybe around five. I think I've seen a few of them at that price. thunking out of it. One second. So anyways, um, like I was saying, there's not much delay if there's any at all. Unnoticeable. The static is annoying because I've noticed that when the transmitter itself comes up against your body or gets close to your body, you get more static. But uh, we were getting a whole lot of static here because, like I say, I'm using the garage stereo. Um, and it's around a whole lot of electronics. I've got the machine set down at 1 on sen manual sensitivity, which helps a little bit for this sh shallow target, not buried at all. So there's that cheaper little version of, or version of cordless setup. Little FM transmitter, multiple ones out there, and you can get them all day long for under $10. Uh, all you need is an FM receiver, basically a set of headphones with an FM radio in them. Um, if you want to go with the earbuds, you can do the like the Sansa or the iPod, anything that has an FM capability without going through an app. You can go through an app, but then you're dealing with um, 
your air time and your data time also. Alrighty, moving to the next one. Okay, and for the D Technics uh, 2.4 gigahertz system, they come in this little box, pretty compact. Uh, I've shown the box uh, after a video I did at the end of a hunt. And in the box you're going to find the warranty card, the instructions, the transmitter, the headphones themselves. You got the micro USB and the old standard USB plug-in cords for charging, an adapter, um, the band, which I'll show you what that's for, and which holds the transmitter on. Actually, there's two bands, and then the case that holds the headphones. And on the transmitter, there's a small port here, which you open it up, exposes a micro USB for charging it. I've used it a few times. I did not charge it before I took it out the first time, so I believe the previous uh, person in our club that did a demo on them or got to try them had charged them prior to giving them to me because they are still holding a really good charge. On the headphone setup, there's the charge port there on this side for charging them. It's just a standard older style USB cord. Um, the only thing I have noticed that I wish these were larger and over the ear, they rotate like this so that when you put them folded in and collapsed, they'll fit in the case nice and small, like so. Um, on them, I'm not sure why you have, since they're for detecting, why you have rewind, pause, play, and fast forward. Not sure on that. The other one has the volume plus and minus and the power button and then the indicator, the LED indicator for power. Um, the other thing I'd like to see on this is maybe they'd have two versions or they just have one that's just a 90 degree because on most detectors this is either going to come out the side of the detector and stick way out or on the E-Track which is what I use, it comes out the end of the uh, detector and it kind of adds some length to it. A 90 degree on this thing I think would be a huge plus. Other than that, very happy with them. Um, I'm just doing a trial on them for the club for 30 days and give my input back to the club members. Maybe it'll interest some people in buying them. I'll give you a demo on those next. Okay, as far as the installation of the transmitter for the D-Technics, Take your hand, wherever your headphones plug in, plug it in. On the E-Track, it's obviously on the end there. This rubber band, see how well I can make this look. It has these grooves on the transmitter. Put the rubber band through the grooves, or around the grooves. Pull it around. And connect it like that. Power button on this side. On the headphones, power button right here. And pause it, set up over my coin, and I'll show you how they sound. Okay, with the D Technics, this end here is the power. This here where it says D, there's nothing in there. Just hold it. Power's on. On the headset, hold the power button. Power's on. Let me see if I can get this set up where you can hear it without covering. The camera. Okay, she's barely balanced on there. Same setup as I have for the other ones. Lower. Faster. Pretty much the same type of setup as running with a regular set of headphones or no headphones at all. It's nice and fast. Same way with pinpointing. Completely usable system. Great sound. And there you have it for that one. Okay, and just with the detector by itself, as 
as you would expect. All right, so here we are at the wrap up. Um, I don't even really need to talk about these because I think you can tell they pretty much just aren't usable for detecting. Too much delay, comfortable, yeah, multiple different Bluetooth headphones and uh, earbuds and types of stuff you can use for it, but ridiculous. You ain't going to find anything that way because you're going to miss it all the time unless you're creeping and crawling and even then it's going to be a headache. Um, the only positive, there was no static. Fair amount of static with the FM transmitter into whatever sort of device you use to receive the FM signal. Headphones like the construction workers would use that would receive FM or earbuds with like the uh, Sansa or an iPod, something that receives FM signal. It works. It's a cheap way to do it. Um, yeah, probably the most inexpensive way to get rid of that ball and chain connection to your machine. The D-Technics, I really like the system. Um, the few things I would, I've mentioned that I'd make a change is I'd put a 90 at the end of this uh, from the factory instead of being a straight one. I think that'd be much more usable to uh, much, if not all the detectors I've ever had in my hand. Over the ear would be a nice, but these make it uh, very compact and uh, easy to pack away and put in your pocket with the case. Well, big pocket, like a coat pocket. Super easy way to fasten it to the machine is, like I was mentioning, these little grooves. You can just barely see the shine of the grooves there. And how it fits. It has a con concave back so it fits on the shaft of machines. Pretty good setup. Great technology, the 2.4. I have also seen some other 2.4 systems out there that have a fairly small transmitter. Uh, I can't think of the name of them. I know their model number. I think it's a WR700. Um, I'll put a picture on after the end of this video of those. I think it's probably one of the best ones out there that I've seen. They're over ear, I believe. Uh, not sure the pricing of these. I, I think these are somewhere in the $90 area. And I think the WR700 is made by, I want to say Toshiba, but I'm probably wrong. I think they're a bit more than that. You might be able to find other ones too, but the 2.4 seems to be the best technology that's the clearest and has not, doesn't, you don't have to deal with that delay. All right. Um, hope you enjoyed this in, hopefully informative video. Uh, just a quick piece I'd like to add is what I carry on me in case my headphones go down is a set of earbuds and then of course the 90 for the adapter. Um, quick easy way if you uh, aren't close to your vehicle and you don't have a spare set of headphones on you, easy way to get out of a, a bad situation. Alrighty, well thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.